there's another compound and it's actually called Moringa. And Dr. Jed Fahey, who's really the expert on sulforaphane, uh, he's a good friend of mine. He's been on the podcast a couple of times. He, um, he, he basically thinks and, you know, has done a lot of research on Moringa as well, that it's, a, it's like a cousin and it activates the NRF2 pathway similarly to sulforaphane. And so I've been buying this Cooley Cooley Moringa powder. I don't have any affiliation with them. Cooley Cooley is a brand. Cooley Cooley is the okay. brand. That you have no affiliation with. I have no affiliation. Okay. But Jed Fay, he like has researched it like like that specific brand. And so it's like legit. It's legit. You know, it's like science backed yeah. um, in terms of actually containing Moringa and activating NRF2. Uh, and I add it to my smoothies. So that's what I've been doing. What, what are some um, dose ranges? I, so and of I, course, we give the usual recommendations that people should talk to their physician, et cetera, et cetera. But um, if people are going to, what do you take? That's always the, uh, let's, take the, let's take the, Sinclair, the David Sinclairian approach. <laughs> right. What do you, where he'll talk about what he does um, as a way to, to deal with this. And of course, everybody's different and should, uh, in all seriousness, should, um, anytime you add or delete something from your uh, uh, consumption, should uh, consult some trusted healthcare professional trusted by you um what do you recall the the dosages i do a big heaping tablespoon um so moringa coolie yeah, coolie moringa it, it sounds is, like a song it's yeah. with a k i know it does. <laughs> um but you know for people also listening it's like well why would i do that you know i mentioned the glutathione in the brain i, I mentioned it in um plasma it's it's been shown to lower dna damage in people and in, in, in white blood cells uh it's also been shown in, there's been several different studies in china you know, in China, there's a lot of air pollution. And I mentioned that, it, you know, it's a very powerful activator of NRF2. And I know you're, you're familiar with NRF2, but NRF2 is like, it's your transcription factor. That is, it is it is binding to a little specific sequence in a variety of different genes. And it's like turning them on, uh, or in some cases, turning them off. It's regulating what's being activated or what's not being activated or being turned off. And um, some of the genes are, are basically these these detoxifying pathways. We talked a little bit about the glutathione, but there's also ones that are involved in um, air, airborne carcinogens like benzene. So benzene is found in air pollution. I mean, cigarette smoke. I mean, if you're if you're smoking cigarettes, still like please try to quit. Yeah, you're but, mutating your DNA. I mean, yeah. It's, like, it's to say worst. nothing of the lung cancer, you're mutating your DNA. And heart disease risk. Heart disease risk. But and anyways, um, people. And this has been repeated in, in more than one study that literally after 24 hours of taking can't remember off the top of my head what the dose of sulforaphane from broccoli ex extract, um, bro broccoli um, seed extract was, or broccoli uh, sprouts extract, not the seed, it was the sprouts. Um, anyways, they started excreting like 60% benzene and acrolein. I mean, that's something that we get in cooked food. It's coming out in their urine? Coming out in their urine. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm so, not a smoker and I have to be honest, it's rare that I hear of a supplement for the first time because I've been you know, a deep diving on supplements since I was in my teens. Uh, this is fascinating. And it brings me back to this question that we had before. And I, I appreciate that you've answered it very clearly. Plants have compounds that are good for us. They're not just stressing us. They're activating pathways that are reparative. That's what, that's what I'm taking away from what, everything you're telling me. Right. And, and, and that our bodies were supposed to be getting that stress to have those pathways activated. Like it is like, you know, right? I mean, this is conserved among different animals. Like this is, this is, this is something that is, is, it's supposed to happen. And in our modern day world, we don't have to eat plants. We don't have to move anywhere or exercise. We don't have to go through periods of not eating food because we can have it at our fingertips at any second. Right? So, I mean, we've got this conundrum of we're never activating these stress response pathways that we're supposed, that we're supposed to activate. We're supposed to. I find that fascinating. And again, uh, drawing a parallel to the nervous system. Um, so what I'm hearing you say is that historically, we would have to go through some stress, some confront cold or confront heat or confront effort or, or hunger in have to exercise essentially in order to obtain these compounds. And then those compounds are reparative. Yeah, I, I feel that resembles uh, the dopamine pathway. I always say, you know, there's nothing wrong with dopamine. People think about dopamine hits as bad or dopamine is bad. There's absolutely nothing wrong with dopamine. The problem is dopamine, especially high levels of dopamine, released without the need for effort to access that dopamine is problematic. So a line of cocaine gives you a ton of dopamine with no effort except to ingest the drug. Whereas 
um, working for four years or more to get your degree will release a lot of dopamine and a lot of cortisol along the way, as we know. And it's considered a healthy accomplishment in most cases. A tremendous amount of, if you, we're approaching the spring and there'll be a lot of graduations. Weddings are coming up now that the pandemic is kind of hopefully slowing. And there'll be a lot of dopamine. High levels of dopamine are great, but only after the effort of having done something in order to access it. And so that's what I'm taking away from what you're saying is that we need to go through this intermittent, the different types of intermittent challenge. And we can, re, we are rewarded with particular compounds that are reparative, both for the challenge, but then it make us stronger. It is, hormesis really is, it seems, a case of what doesn't kill us makes us stronger.